Hi, my name is Sherman Snyder. I'm a uh, Mastercam AE out of the Houston, Texas area for MLC CAD Systems. And today I'd like to talk to you all about milling large chamfers with small chamfer tools. Let's go ahead and jump into Mastercam and take a look at how this process is done. So as we can see here, I have a model with a chamfer already on it. And I also have a default mill loaded. And inside of the tool manager here, we can also see that I have a chamfer mill already created. This chamfer mill is going to be a half inch diameter chamfer mill and it's got a specified length and cutting length but more importantly we have an angle and a tool tip width. Let's go ahead and close this down and we're going to look at a couple different options that we have for creating this chamfer mill. Let's analyze this feature and we can see that we have a one inch length chamfer versus our half inch diameter chamfer mill. Inside of my levels manager I have some planes already created. These planes are offset from this top face. And what we're going to do is use our wireframe curve at intersects option that we have right here, intersection, to create the curves that we see on level three. Now this is a more primitive way of cutting this chamfer, but let's go ahead and create a contour. And we're simply going to select the wireframe geometry that was created. We can green check OK, and we're going to go over to our tools, and I'll just give this a comment of chamfer, uh, we'll say 1. For our cut parameters, I'm going to go ahead and change this over to a uh, 2D chamfer here. And I'm going to remove the width and the bottom offset here for this chamfer, since we already have the chamfer created. Lead in, lead out. I'll simply just remove the radius that we have and we'll we'll go ahead and copy these options over to the right side for our exit as well. For my linking parameters, I'm going to go ahead and give it some uh, some values here for clearance, retract, and our feed plane. But for our stock and our depth, I want to tell it that we have an incremental distance because we're based off of the geometry that we're selected incrementally. And we'll green check OK. So here we have our chamfer mill being done using the geometry that was created. But there's another way, and let's take a look at this formula. So for a chamfer tool that uses the taper angle outside diameter and the inside diameter for the tip, this is our formula here. Negative sine of the taper angle times the outside diameter minus the diameter divided by 2, which is going to give us, in this case, a negative 0.155563 offset for our stock to leave behind. So now let's look at an easier method of doing this without creating geometry. So let's go ahead and select the edge of our solid here. And we're going to go inside of the parameters for this particular operation. We see we still have the same tool. We'll label this one chamfer 2. I'll say uh, with formula. So next we're going to go over to the cut parameters, and instead of doing a 2D chamfer, we're going to set this one for 2D contour. This is going to allow us to play with our depths. And as we see here, I can give it a max step, and I can also give it a finish cut if I want to for my depth at the very bottom. But more importantly, we also have the option for our tapered walls, and I can tell it 45 degree in this case for our chamfer. I'm going to go to the lead in, lead out options, and we'll leave these the same as the previous operation. Inside of our cut parameters, I'm going to leave the clearance and retract options the same, but we're going to set the top of stock for absolute zero. And the depth, we're going to have the negative one inch. Uh, let's add a little bit more. We'll say one inch fifty thousandths. From here, we're missing one more feature. We need to go back to our cut parameters. And inside of our cut parameters, we see the stock that we said we were going to have to take away in order to offset our tool. And we're going to place that in our stock to leave on walls, negative 0.155563. And I'll green check OK. So now let's uh, rotate our part. And I'm meant to do the right side here. There we go. And now we can back plot this operation and see how our tool follows with that offset with the tip of our tool. So in this case, 
looks like the tool's following along pretty good, but let's say we wanted to have, um, I don't know, multiple passes. Let's go to our multi-pass option, and let's turn this option on, we'll say five at a quarter inch, yeah? And we could even add finish cuts if we wanted to, but I'm just gonna bypass. So we see here we got a lot of air cutting. So I'm gonna use this other method for trimming operations as well. Just gonna throw a little trick out there for everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this operation. Let's bring this up a little bit higher, about right there. And I'll do a quick trim of that wireframe geometry. And under our toolpath tab in the utilities group, we have trim. I could select my chain green check OK and select the side of the operation I want to keep and of course my operation itself. You can also see that we have my right plane for construction and the T plane there. And when we generate that we can trim our toolpath to eliminate any kind of air cutting that we have in this case. 